Hey guys, Dev with Crime Hive, and we're doing another segment on the Lori Vallow Daybell case. Now, a lot of people keep asking the question, you know, where's the children? Are they alive? Are they missing? And there's been a lot of talk about this cult perspective and kind of the beliefs that Lori and Chad shared that may be connected to this case and really the mysteries revolving around this case, um, all the different backstories that we're hearing. So we're going to kind of talk about that and we're going to start with right over here i found an article here that talks let me minimize this here so there was a resident here in eastern idaho named angela stone and she talks about how she was groomed to be part of this group now what she specifies though is you know chad and lori were considered lds or you know latter-day saints or mormon however you want to say that uh, but she's talking about how chad and lori were very divergent from that religion. So we're talking about more of a radical aspect to that religion or to that group. So, uh, you know, it, it's very, uh, there's very strange beliefs that we're going to talk about. I'm going to give you some examples of kind of some of the beliefs that they, um, they share. And, and here's an example just on here that um, Chad, believe is, Chad believed his wife, who suspiciously passed away uh, before he married Lori, how, you know, she, he talks about how she was inhabited by a zombie or by an evil spirit and that she didn't have control of herself and was detrimental to the work of God. So that's how deep this type of belief is. And again, it's, it seems like it's a very radical type of uh, perspective and belief that may have led to some of these crazy decisions and the disappearance of of these children. We're talking about the disappearance of Tylee and JJ who are still missing to this day. So a couple things that we know. We know that Chad and Lori met in the fall of 2018 at this Preparing a People seminar. It was a group and what they believe is they believe that there's a second coming of Jesus and that they need to prepare for this and they have a whole podcast series talking about this i haven't i haven't dived into this i haven't really gotten into in depth in these uh, podcasts or anything like that but here's a resource if you guys wanted to look into that and kind of get an idea however this group has has also mentioned to news and media that they don't share the beliefs of chad and Lori, even though chad and Lori were part of this group and a lot of people have deemed this group, though, a doomsday type of cult. You know, a real, and, and when we talk about doomsday cult, we're talking about a new religious movement that talks about the world ending. It's going to be catastrophic and that there needs to be this preparation for it. So uh, we know that John Laughlin first used this term in 1966, study of the Unification Church. So that's another thing that you guys can look into if you're interested in that. Start looking into the Unification Church to get a better understanding of, of this belief. But again, we're still talking about a very radical type of thinking. Not necessarily, you know, again, I'm just a very neutral party. I'm not dogging on any religions or any groups out there. I'm just talking about what we know Chad and Lori really believed. So here's a couple of crazy examples I'm going to talk about with uh, with this case. And we're and as you guys may may know, Charles, who was married to Lori, was shot by Lori's brother. And and we have some information from a friend of Charles through text messages, and he had shared this through the media, uh, some of the things that were going on in Lori's mind before he died. He was scared for his life and noticed that Lori had changed dramatically before he died. So here's an example of these text messages. So uh, it, it's really weird because before I get into the text messages, we know that uh, Charles Vallow's sister actually talked about, told Dateline, that that um, Lori started believing that Charles was this other person named Nick Schneider. That's how weird this is. Nick Schneider, apparently, and that a demon had taken over Charles's body. So this freaks Charles out, and he's talking to his friend, and he starts saying uh, he starts saying this in April 2019. Before he died, he says, and I'm just going to read some of these, things have changed so drastically in the past six months. Something snapped. It is so unbelievable and scary. I'm thankful she doesn't see JJ. She wants him and for me to disappear. Seriously, it's the freakiest thing I've ever experienced. She's with a group of people called Woke, 
and preparing a people. Now, I've heard woke. I don't know much information on this. I've tried to look for this group woke. Maybe you guys can help. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys know about it? Comment below. Subscribe to my channel. Obviously, we're going to have more videos coming out about this. I've talked about preparing a people, but not familiar with woke. I, I've heard of, I've seen some different woke um, Bible groups and things like that. I'm not sure which one Lori and Chad might be connected to. So if you guys have information on that, let me know. And anyway, uh, Charles also mentioned that, you know, she actually believes I'm not Charles. She says an evil spirit named Nick Schneider murdered me and is using me to violate her. That's the kind of thinking we're talking about here. So these, this is a very deep, deep dive into, into her perspective. And so I'm just wondering what you guys think about that. Now, again, we know that Chad Daybell, he has written several books on doomsday type material, okay? The, the world ending and he's written fictional books and he's a, a very popular author with that type of niche, that type of category. And you can see right here, here's an example. He's got a book called The Great Gathering. And what's kind of crazy though, is if you look on Amazon, for example, people are pissed and, and obviously so. You know, and, they, and they're starting to, you know, mention all these comments. I mean, look at his ratings on that. Just, just to, I know I'm kind of going off topic here, but if you look here, all these one stars all of a sudden popping up. People are asking, you know, please stop selling their books. Where's the children? You know, find, you know, tell us where the children are and that kind of stuff's going on. So uh, really crazy things going on with this movement. Now, to give you a really crazy example of the, ins, just to really, the inner workings of this, this, religious group or cult, if you will. I don't know. I don't know what she's exactly a part of with this, but um, here's an example. Uh, when she met Chad, Lori asked Chad to determine whether her two children had light or dark spirits. This was nearly a year before they were missing, according to this article here. So as we learn about it, we this is this is strange. So uh, Daybell ends up emailing her requesting for family history documents. So he requests all these documents and then he comes out with these charts and explains whether Tylee and JJ were a dark or a light spirit. And, and I kind of have a little thing to show you here that kind of talks about it. He sends this information and I don't even understand it. Maybe you guys do. Maybe you guys know about this already. Let me know your thoughts on this. If you know anything about this type of chart, he goes into talking about, um, you know, the, the the ratings. It's like a rating scale for being a light or a dark spirit. And again, strange stuff. What do you guys think about all that? So uh, last thing I want to talk about real quick to give you an idea of why she may be thinking this way and, and why it's possible she could have done something very extreme because of this, the, these thoughts. And some people believe that she was simply brainwashed. I mean, a lot of these cults operate uh, with with uh, you know this this recruitment. They recruit on fear, especially for example, you know we've got the coronavirus going on. There's definitely groups that are going to be recruiting because of that heightened stress. You know, so I'm looking at another article here. They talk about heightened stress and how people become more susceptible to these types of groups. And they uh, and and they talk about these. You know, the psychologist talks about these psychological traits that kind of go into the, the cult, the, the, just the, the, the cult and kind of what stems around that. And so some of these things call on dependency, you know, an intense desire to belong or lacking self-confidence, easy to recruit people like that. Uh, unassertiveness, you know, they don't question authority. They get somebody that, um, you know, is confident, knows exactly what they're talking about. They have a movement that they created, people follow, and, you know, they don't question it. So they're very gullible. They, they, they just kind of go along with the beliefs and they follow it and they get deeper and deeper into this cult. So, you know, they, they, uh, they don't have a low tolerance for uncertainty. That's a big one, especially when you talk about doomsday and things like that. Uh, some people need to know, hey, everything's going to be okay, or I'm, I'm living for this purpose and I need to fulfill these obligations for my, my group or for my people. They need to believe in something. And so, you know, just, just kind of just touching on a few things. I'm not going to go into an entire lecture on this, but I thought it was really interesting that, uh, you know, 
desire for spiritual meaning. All these things are giving these cult leaders ammunition, essentially, to target these people and get them involved in, you know, uh, into the cult. They use deception and manipulation. Very, very common. Uh, gaslighting techniques. Um, a lot of manipulation involved. And then it becomes extremely difficult for people to then get out of the cult. I mean, there's there are treatment centers to help people with addiction and getting out of a cult safely and being able to uh, move on with their lives. So it's some really deep stuff. Wanted to know what you guys thought about all that. And again, this is Dev with Crime Hive. Subscribe to my channel. I'll come out with more videos. Last thing I want to leave is I found one last thing that uh, there was another interview with Lori's mother and sister, and they were talking about how um, they asked the question, do you think you know the, the children are in a bunker somewhere? And they said, I think it's possible, you know, but they don't really know. And so from this statement, it, it makes you wonder, do they are they just withholding information or they just truly have no idea what Chad and Lori uh, have done with these children or what's going on. But uh, you know, I just thought that was another interesting segment. So anyway, this is Dev again with Crime Hive, and I'll see you guys in another video.